Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Riti and I'm back with another lecture in the DBMS series. So in the last couple of lectures we learned about transaction and concurrency control in DBMS. In this particular video we would be learning about ACID properties in DBMS. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now what are these ACID properties? So ACID properties are the properties which ensures that the transactions are processed reliably and accurately even in complex situations like system failures or network issues. So if we encounter any complex situations like system failures, network issues while having a transaction, it makes sure that the transaction is accurate and reliable. So ACID properties are the properties which make sure that our transaction is processed reliably and accurately. Now coming to the accurate ACID. So A stands for atomicity which means that either execute all the operations or none of the operations should be executed. Coming to C that is consistency which says that read should fetch up to date data and write shouldn't violate any integrity constraints. Now coming to I that is isolation. So one transaction should be independent of other transaction that is they should be isolated. Now coming to D that is durability. So the committed transaction should remain even after a failure or crash. So if we update the value in the database that should remain even after we fail any failure or crash. So let's learn about each and every in depth. Now coming to A that is atomicity. So it ensures that a transaction is treated as a single unit of work. Either all operations are completed successfully that is commit or none of them are applied that is rollback. So as I told in the earlier videos as well that if at any point there is any failure which is encountered in the transaction before the commit we often perform the rollback that is we revert back it to its original state. So it says that either all operations should be completed or none of them should be applied. So if there is a transaction consider there is a transaction begin we read a value from A, we update the value of A and then we perform the commit. If at any point here, if the transaction fails because of some network failures or other issues, we have to perform a rollback. So we will perform a rollback and it will go back to its original state. And if at any point there is no failures, then we perform the commit and the data is updated into our DB. So this guarantees that the database remains in a consistent state despite any failures or interruptions during the transaction. It ensures that our database remains in a consistent state because consider that if I have updated any value into our database and if there are some more operations which are being performed on the same data, then there should be inconsistency which will be present. Now consider an example. So consider Ram is transferring money to Sham. The transaction must deduct the amount from Ram's account and then add it to Sham account as a single operation. If at any moment or at any part this transaction fails while transferring amount from Ram to Sham, example due to insufficient funds, system error, network error, the entire transaction is rolled back ensuring that none of the account is affected partially. So if there are transaction which is happening between two accounts Ram and Sham and if we are transferring any amount of money from Ram to Sham, if at any point there is any failure which is encountered because consider maybe we are transferring 100 rupees to Sham and Ram's current balance is only 50 rupees. So we are encountering an issue because Ram is having insufficient balance. So we should roll back this transaction and it should come to its original state. So let's learn about consistency. So consistency ensures that first read operations retrieve consistent and up-to-date data from the database and second write operation ensures that the data modification maintain database constraint such as foreign key relationship unique constraints so that the data remains accurate so consistency says that the data should be consistent now whenever we are performing any read operation of any of the data consider we are reading the value of a so it should show me the up-to-date data like the last updated value of a should be shown while doing the read operation and coming to the write operation so if i'm doing any write operation on the a so it should ensure that the data modification maintain database constraint so if there is any constraint which is applied consider that it is a primary key so i can't update any duplicate value in it right so these constraints should be maintained and these constraints should be taken care while updating any value in the database. So it guarantees that the database remains in a consistent state before and after the execution of each transaction. So it ensures that our database should be in a consistent state before and after execution of any of the transaction. So consider A is transferring 10 rupees to B. 
so what we need to do first we'll fetch the current value of a so the current value of a is consider 50 rupees now we need to perform the arithmetic operation where we need to deduct 10 rupees from a so that would be 50 minus 10 that is 40 rupees so we will write the value of 40 in a now we need to fetch the current value of b so we'll fetch the current value of b consider 20 rupees now we need to update the value of b so b will be having 10 rupees extra so that would be 20 plus 10 that is 30 rupees now we have to write this particular value in b that is 30 rupees so before the transaction if you see a was having 50 rupees and b was having 20 rupees so 50 plus 20 gives us 70 now after the transaction if you see a is having 40 rupees and b is having 30 rupees if we again do the addition it is 70 so you can see that data is consistent before as well as after the transaction so consistency basically ensures that the data should be consistent if we are reading any value from the database it should give me an up-to-date value if i'm writing any value or updating any value in the database i should follow the integrity constraint so that the value which is being updated is not a wrong value or doesn't violate any of the integrity constraint now consider an example consider you had 100 rupees in your account but you want 50 rupees cash so you transferred 50 rupees to a person x and he gave you 50 rupees cash now before the transaction you are having 100 rupees in your account now after the transaction again you are having 100 rupees 50 rupees you have in your account and 50 rupees is the cash which you got from the person x so you can see that the data is consistent before as well as after the transaction now coming to I, that is isolation. So it ensures that if there are two transactions, one and two, then the changes made by transaction one are not visible to transaction two until transaction one commits. So if there are two transactions which is happening, consider on the data A only, there are two set of transactions happening. So as part of first transaction, we are increasing the value of A by 10. And as part of second transaction, we are decreasing the value of A by 10. So while the transaction is reading the data, the DBMS ensures that the data is consistent and isolated from other transaction. So these two transactions should be isolated from each other. This means that the other transaction cannot modify the data being read by the current transaction. So consider if T1 is the current transaction, T2 can't be performed until or unless T1 is committed or all the operations are done successfully. Only then T2 can go ahead and read the updated value which is being updated here. So until it's committed or rollback. So if this transaction is committed or if there is any rollback which is performed, we have to wait for this transaction to complete. Only then T2 can go ahead and read the value of A and perform its operation. So here is an example. Consider A is having 40 rupees in the DB. So transaction 1 is updating the value of A to 50 rupees. Transaction 2 is reading, getting or fetching the value of A. So if transaction 1 is committed, according to transaction 2, the value of A would be 50 rupees. As in transaction 1, we are updating the value of A to 50 rupees. So now 40 would be updated to 50. And since this transaction is committed, now T2 can fetch from the current value that is 50 rupees. Now if transaction 1 is in pending or running state, according to transaction 2, the value of A would be 40 rupees. Because still the transaction 1 is not completed. So if we read the value of A, it would be 40 rupees only because the right operation has not been completed it's in pending or running state so the value of a would be 40 rupees so you can see that there is data inconsistency that is why it said that if there are two transaction which is happening we have to wait for one transaction to be completed or committed before starting the second operation which involves the modifying the same data which transaction one is also modifying so two transactions should be isolated of each other so let's learn about D that is durability. So it ensures that once you save your data that is commit a transaction, it stays saved even if the system crashes or there is a power failure. So consider you saved your data into the database and immediately after that there is a system failure or there is a system crash. That particular data would be saved in your database. That particular data won't be lost. So your data is always safe and won't disappear after you save as committed transactions are not lost. So if you commit a transaction that could never be lost even if there is any system failure or any network issue. If your transaction is committed, the data is saved, it's not lost. 
So most DBMS use a technique called as write ahead logging, that is WAL, to ensure durability. Before modifying the data in the database, the DBMS writes the changes into a transaction log, which is often stored on a disk and in a sequential manner. This ensures that if there is any failure event, the database can recover to a consistent state. So how a transaction takes place? So consider that if there is a transaction where A is transferring some amount to B. So what A will do? A will fetch the current value, then A will do some arithmetic operation and then after doing the arithmetic operation A will update its value. So once A update its value this particular log is saved in the transaction log. So when we do write of A it is not saved into the database it is rather saved into the transaction log and transaction log is deleted once we encounter the commit. So using this transaction log we can recover our DBMS to a consistent state. So consider an example if you are transferring 100 rupees to your friend and there is a sudden power outage or system crashes right after the transaction is committed. The changes the transfer of 100 rupees will still be saved in the database when the system is backup both your account and your friend account will reflect the updated balance. So once the system is back up, it will show the updated amount to him as well as his friend. So this makes sure that even if there is any failure, everything is getting saved into our database and we have transaction logs to monitor each and everything at each and every point of transaction. So let's re-revise about ACID properties. So A stands for atomicity, which tells that either all operations should be executed or none of them should be executed. C stands for consistency, which says that if we are performing any read operation the data should be up to date if we are performing any write operation or update operation we should be following the integrity constraints to update the value now third is isolation which says that if there are two transactions they should be isolated of each other that is first transaction should commit before the second transaction start now coming to durability it says that if there are any committed changes in our database that should be reflecting that should be saved even if there is any system crash or network failure which has happened happened. So this was all about ACID properties in this particular video. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're someone who is new to my channel, can go ahead and watch out the tech content first. And if you find it useful, can go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you have not followed me on my social media handles, you can go ahead and follow. The links are in the description. Till then, take care, keep learning, keep growing, keep smiling. Bye all.